All right, I will start introducing you. Um, I am talking today with Dr. Brian Orr of Brian Orr Pediatrics in Gloucester. Good morning, Dr. Orr. Good morning, Heather. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you. Uh, we are at week number 11 with this COVID crisis. And <laughs> let me just ask you, how are you doing? How is your staff doing? How's your office? Um, I would say that it's been stressful. Uh, we're, uh, we're doing fine. Uh, it's, um, but we're, we're under different stresses than we have been in the past. And uh, we've seen many families not seeing them so much in the office, but uh, we know of and been working with many families that have uh, coronavirus in the family. The kids are doing very well. The families are generally doing very well. We've had occasional um, uh, people older in the family that are, that are getting very sick. Uh, but um, for the most part, the families have been doing very well. An amazing number, uh, not having many symptoms at all, but positive for the COVID. Wow. And were they just simply tested because of other circumstances and they found out they were positive or they contract tra contact tracing? Contacts within the family, somebody uh, who did get sick uh, was tested, came back positive, and then the rest of the family gets tested. And we then have varying number of people in the, pa in the family that are positive. Um, those who are even negative have to be tested again to see if they contracted in the time that they're under quarantine. So it's, it's kind of a, a management nightmare <laughs> for the family and for us. <laughs> Exactly. And you're seeing most of your patients with telemedicine, right? With the uh, with COVID, yes. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of sick patients in the office. Uh, we do have a screening mechanism that if somebody does have fever, cough, uh, any kind of symptoms of COVID, they're not coming to us. We're sending them out to the drive-through testing with Leahy. Uh, so we don't see them in the office. We don't want to see them in the office. Um, we are seeing other sick kids for various reasons, but uh, we're not seeing the kids with COVID or suspected COVID. Um, they're getting tested elsewhere. So, so returning to children in families where COVID is present, uh, did you say that the children are testing positive also? We've had many kids test positive as well, um, but they are, I don't, I've had some teenagers that have had some symptoms, um, cold type of symptoms, maybe a little cough, sore throat, things like that. Um, one, uh, kids who've had lost their sense of taste for a while, um, but those were teenagers. The younger kids, I haven't had any younger child uh, with any symptoms at all. Uh, they are just cooking along and happy and fine. Yeah, well, on that note, uh, it sounds like things are great regarding children in this community with COVID, but elsewhere in the country, there is this syndrome that people are seeing, the multi-system inflammatory syndrome. Is that right? Is that how I say it? It's a multi-system inflammatory syndrome. That's correct. Yeah. You want to talk about that? And I imagine some parents could be very concerned. Yes, and it's it's uh, actually uh, can be quite serious issue. It's still very rare. Uh, I've seen cases of it in the past. Uh, I've seen cases of Kawasaki's disease, um, which is the, the quintessential multi-system uh, inflammatory syndrome. Um, and that's where they get inflammation of their eyes, their mouth, their lips are red, their tongue's red. Um, they can have abdominal issues. Uh, it can affect the heart. Um, they get rashes, skin rashes that are very unique, different rashes. Uh, so uh, we know what we're looking for with these um, things, but it's still very rare. Remember they had 100 cases in all of New York, uh, which is not a whole lot. So we are definitely on the lookout for them. Uh, parents are on the lookout too and are very worried about their child. So we're getting a lot of calls about a lot of rashes. And this is the season where we see a lot of rashes, right? We get heat rashes just from with young kids just driving in the car on a hot day. Um, we have people reacting to the sun. We have people who are getting poison ivy, uh, bug bites. Uh, so we're, this is the season where we come up with a lot of rashes anyway. All of those are not COVID related and not the multi-system inflammatory syndrome. 
Um, this, this syndrome comes up uh, even though somebody may be asymptomatic from COVID or any from other viruses as well. Um, the, this inflammatory response usually comes a couple weeks after um, having had the illness. And what happens is that they then uh, start getting symptoms of the rash, the red mouth, the red eyes, conjunctivitis. Um, so there's uh, reasons to be concerned about it because we're not testing everybody and a lot of kids have asymptomatic infection. So I can understand why we would have uh, concern from parents' point of view with a new rash. And, and is this one of those Kawasaki's or multi-system issues? Um, I can say that uh, I have seen an exact uh, case of it as of yet, but we, we are aware, we know what to look for, Certainly, I encourage people to call or text, and we're doing a lot of telemedicine for these rashes as well. So we can we can do telemedicine. We can get uh, pictures from their from their phones. We can do a uh, video conference uh, over it where we're seeing the rash. Uh, so we don't necessarily have to even have them brought into the office, but we can assess these rashes pretty easily, and we can know whether it's something related to a tick bite, mosquito bites, or, or sun, or whatever. So, um, but I'm not terribly worried because it's still gonna be a very rare event. Uh, so we shouldn't really be overall thinking that because we have a pandemic, doesn't mean we're gonna have an epidemic of the multi-system inflammatory syndrome. Right, I just, I'm not sure we made it totally clear that there is a suspicion that this multi-system inflammatory syndrome is associated with COVID and the antibodies created by COVID, right? That's right. Um, it is a known phenomenon that this, this inflammatory syndrome comes on after viruses. It, 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 almost all cases we've seen in the past, and the case I had many years ago, um, came after having had an illness. And it seems like uh, corona is uh, an illness that is stimulating this kind of response in children that we've seen more cases of it. And it's been reported in multiple countries, in Italy, in, uh, in England, and, and in the United States, particularly in New York. So it is something that we are um, thinking that is coming as a result of this pandemic. Uh, but it's not one of these things that because your child tested positive for corona, for example, or had an asymptomatic case, that they are going to get this response. It is still pretty rare um, uh, side effect of corona. And we'll, we'll, if we even see a case in Gloucester or in, in Cape Ann, uh, it would be one of very, very, very few. Right. Uh, well, I really wanted to ch check in with that because it's been in the news uh, quite a bit in the past week or so, I think. Um, anything else you want your families in the community to know about? Well, there was, I just wanted to clarify too that um, there was a report yesterday from uh, a British journal um, about um, the effect on kids. And, and when you look at the effect of corona on, on people, it's a grand majority is the elderly, grand majority. And yes, the news is coming out with cases of the 40 year old or the 30 year old or people in their 20s getting sick. Yes, a lot of people can get sick from this. But as you get into the younger ages, you're really talking about very few uh, people having significant symptoms, very few not having uh, something that they can just easily get over. Mm -hmm. So that's the majority, the grand majority of kids are going to do just fine with this. That is the fact of the matter. And these other things, the kids who really get sick with corona, maybe they have some uh, pre-existing conditions that might uh, make them at risk. And if you have one of those, whether it's uh, asthma or you have rheumatoid arthritis or autoimmune disease, or you have diabetes, a child with diabetes, or you have a child who's had a transplant and is uh, on immunosuppressive um, uh, drugs. Though, you know, there are cases where you need to be concerned. But a grand majority of kids, healthy kids, are going to get through this just fine and are not going to get this inflammatory syndrome as well. Okay. Um, could you give us your feelings about wearing masks? So I think that we should still social distance and I think we should wear masks. Um, 
I think we can uh, start expanding our little bubble that we're living in. And, and it, because I think uh, after 11 weeks, people are starving for social interaction, especially teenagers and young kids. Um, and so I think it's good to expand bubbles carefully with people you know and trust are well and healthy and have been uh, isolating themselves. I still think we should generally um, err on the side of caution in regards to our opening up. I think we should keep our distance on the beaches. If you're outside in open air, you probably don't need a mask if you're not around people. But if you're around people, we need to be wearing masks. I just ordered a whole new bunch. Um, so it's, it, I think we're gonna be doing this for a while. I think people have to keep in mind that just because we are over a peak in Massachusetts doesn't mean that this is going away. This is not going away. Even if we have a second peak, during that time, in between those two peaks, we're still gonna have cases of corona. This is not gonna go down to zero. And the more that we contain and be smart about our exposures, the more we're gonna contain this and delay even a second hum. So I think we still have to be very smart. Get outside, go for hikes, go to the beach, but keep some social distance, wear your mask, uh, let some kids socialize a little bit with close uh, expanded bubble, uh, your expanded bubble of people, but um, but uh, let's not have wild um, uh, interactive parties where uh, nobody's wearing masks. I, I think that's not a very bright thing to do right now. All right, that is great advice for today, and I look forward to talking to you even next week. Okay, take right. it easy, okay? Thank you, Dr. Bye. Take care. Bye.